OK, so the next thing we're going to look at is multiplying and dividing with complex numbers. And this is where patterns really start to emerge and you can start to see why argand diagrams are becoming really useful. Um, so I've said here, find the modulus and argument of 1 plus i and 1 plus root 3. This should say i as well. And when you multiply these complex numbers together, do you notice anything about the modulus and the argument of the result? So I'm going to give you a few minutes to find the modulus and the argument of 1 plus i, the modulus and the argument of 1 plus root 3i. Then I'm going to want you to expand these brackets. Then for that result, I want you to find the modulus and I want you to find the argument and to see if there are any things that you can spot. So pause the video here. Um, you can either do it on your calculator or you can do them in the manual way and then come back in a second and see if we can spot the results together. OK, so I have already calculated these to save us a bit of time. You should have got for 1 plus i, its modulus is root 2 and the argument was pi over 4. And for 1 plus root 3i, the uh, modulus is 2 and the argument is pi over 3. When you expand these brackets, you should come up with this. You can see I've collected the real parts and the imaginary parts together. And its modulus is 2 root 2 and its argument is 7 pi over 12. And I'm wondering if you might be able to spot how this modulus is related to these and how this argument is related to these. Well, I think the uh, modulus is probably a lot easier to spot here. The modulus is easier to spot because it just looks like when these two numbers are multiplied, the modulus are also multiplied. Root 2 times 2 is just 2 root 2. So it appears that these multiply to give us the overall modulus. Maybe a little bit trickier to spot here. But the arguments, this pi over 4 and pi over 3 and 7 pi over 12, this is actually from an addition. These arguments are added together. If you just think about um, creating a common denominator, you would have 3 pi over 12 plus 4 pi over 12. This one and this one like this, obviously giving you the 7 pi over 12. So the observation that we have here is that the modulus, or sometimes they say moduli for, pure, for plural, the moduli are multiplied and the arguments are added. And so this is going to create some interesting patterns of things you might spot on argand diagrams. When you multiply these complex numbers together, the arguments are going to add and the moduli are going to multiply. So let's have a quick look at what this might look like in action. So you can type this GeoGebra link that I've got down here into any web page um, or on like a phone or something. Um, but I've already got it up here. So let's explore this together and just see what is happening. So I've got these two complex numbers here. I've got Z1 and Z2. And if I just tap the multiply bit here, we can see that we've got Z1 and Z2 being multiplied, which is this green dot that we've got at the top. So let's just put them in some nice places to begin with. I've got, let's do a 2 for the modulus of Z1 and a 2.5. I can never get these to be as accurate as I want. And you should be able to see, let's keep it just roughly at two, that the modulus of the green number is now 4.94. So roughly the 1.98 times the 2.5 is pretty much close to five. And you should also be able to see that the arguments, so Z1's argument is 0 0.5 and Z2's argument is 1.04. And the Z1, Z2 argument is 1.54. So what's happened is the two angles have added together and the lengths of Z1 and Z2 have multiplied. So let's see if we can spot what might happen if I put Z2 here and Z1 down here. Well, the argument of Z1 and Z2, one of them is positive. Z1 is, um, sorry, one of them is positive, which is Z2, which is 0 0.79. And one of them is negative, which is Z1, which is minus 0 0.79. When those two arguments are added together, you just produce a number which is real because it has zero for the arguments. So really, it's just the length of these lines that have changed. And you can see what might happen here. Let's just have 1 and i. You can see how they multiply. And as you move them around, you can see how you add one angle on and it makes the z1, z2 move further around. Interesting stuff behaving there, OK? You can also do this later on for dividing. Dividing, I wonder if you can think what might happen. So let's just get these back to some kind of place. With dividing, it looks like if we're doing z1 divided by z2, 
whatever the modulus of z1 is, when you divide it by z2, you get the modulus of z1 divided by z2. And instead of the arguments being added, the arguments are subtracting, okay? So the arguments are subtracting in this case here. Anyway, you can go and have a look at that in GeoGebra and play around. It might be nice to use it alongside some of the questions that you do, okay? Let's go back. So we'll do a couple of examples here, but before we do that, let's just clarify what we've got written in the box here. So when you multiply complex numbers, when you do Z1 multiplied by Z2, the modulus of Z1, Z2 is the modulus of Z1 multiplied by the modulus of Z2. The arguments, when it's being multiplied, you add the arguments separately. Similarly, for, div for division, if you're dividing two complex numbers, the modulus is just the top's modulus divided by the bottom's modulus, and the arguments is the first one's argument subtract the second one's argument when you're doing a division. So let's have a quick look at this example that we've got here. So for Z1, I could say that Z1's modulus, or R1, is just 3. And its argument, so I'm going to call that theta1, is 5 pi over 12. For Z2, its modulus is 4. Obviously, you could write it like this if you wanted to, whatever you prefer. I'm just going to stick with my R. And theta2 is pi over 12. Obviously, you could also write arg of z2 is pi over 12 and do it in that kind of language, but I'm just choosing this for this question. You decide whichever you prefer. So if I'm going to work out z1, z2, if I'm going to try and multiply these, I'm going to need to find out what r1, r2 is. So it's going to be 3 multiplied by 4, which is 12. And I'm also going to need to do theta1 plus theta2. So that's 5 pi over 12 plus pi over 12. That is 6 pi over 12, which is, of course, just pi over 2. So if I was going to put that all together, I can say that z1, z2 is this modulus. So that's 12. And then I'm going to open up those brackets, and I've got cos of the new argument, which is pi over 2 plus i sine pi over 2. Like I said earlier, you could use this notation instead of using the r and theta notation. It's totally up to you whichever thing you fancy using. So we've done it in this form that they wanted. They also want it in an x plus i y form. Now you could get your calculator out and find out what cos of pi over 2 is or sine of pi over 2, but really, you should just think about the argand diagram here because it's a much more elegant way of thinking about this. So I would just imagine or sketch and I would know that pi over 2 is on the, I'm not very good at always writing this, I should be writing real and imaginary. So pi over 2 is somewhere along here, 90 degrees from the positive real axis and it's 12 long. So we have something that is 12 long and it's pi over 2 pretty obvious what that number is going to be. Z1, Z2 is just going to be 12i. It's just going to be 12i. You could put it in your calculator, you'll see that cos of pi over 2 is going to be 0 and sine of pi over 2 is going to be 1. I'll show you though. Cos of pi over 2 is 0 and sine of pi over 2 is 1. I prefer always thinking about the argand diagram um, with simple angles like this rather than typing into my calculator. Okay, let's just do one quick example with a division that we've got here. This time I'm going to just sort of go straight in with the calculation. So I've got root two, whoops, cos of pi over 12 plus i sine pi over 12 over two brackets, cos of five pi over six, plus i sine 5 pi over 6. So we can tell that the first thing that's going to happen is these moduli are going to divide. So I'll just do root 2 divided by 2. Root 2 divided by 2. It's just going to be 1 over root 2 or root 2 over 2. But I'm happy just to leave it as actually root 2 over 2. Very bad use of the calculator there. I'm going to open this up. So we're now going to be thinking about the angles. So we're going to have cos of pi over 12 minus 5 pi over 6 plus i sine pi over 12. I'm subtracting these rather than adding these arguments like this. So let's work out what is pi over 12. Can't be bothered to type in the pi, so I'm just going to do 1 over 12 minus 5 over 6. So it's minus 3 quarters pi. So it's going to be root 2 over 2 
cos of minus 3 pi over 4 plus i sine minus 3 pi over 4. Now I could do this without a calculator. I'm feeling pretty lazy. So let's get that answer and multiply it by pi. Now let's do the cos of that. So that's minus 1 over root 2. So that's root 2 over 2 multiplied by minus 1 over root 2. And let's do the sine of that answer as well. And so it's also minus 1 over root 2. So that is going to be minus 1 over root 2 i. So let's multiply both of those by root 2 over 2. Multiplied by root 2 over 2. And we get minus a half. So again, our final answer is minus a half minus a half i. If you wanted to, um, you could verify this by actually probably typing this whole thing into the calculator. But we want to see it in this way of just checking that we've understood that we are dividing the, mod uh, the modulus and subtracting the arguments. Before you get going with the next exercise, please watch my next video because I'm going to just point out one thing that's really important to help you manipulate a particular form of the modulus argument form of a complex number.